welcome. It's very, I'm very happy to have you here. Um, if I can dive straight into the first thing, I wanted to talk with you about something that you're very much engaged in from uh, Goldback Solar's perspective, and that is Agri-PV. But before we do, I'm trying to scan if I see some confused faces, and I'm spotting a few. Yes, I see you. Can you maybe first explain to us what Agri-PV in essence sort of means? Agri-Voltaics, uh, that's what I call it. Yeah. Um, is a combination of you have solar at a certain level and then you plant plants or, or raise uh, animals underneath. So right. it's a combination, it's a double use of the soil. Okay, oh, that's very straightforward, succinct <laughs> analysis of it as well. And can you maybe explain to us what are some of the benefits? So if I understand it correctly, it's, it's the panels actually on top of, for example, berries that we would have be growing or other sort of wildlife that, that sort of lives underneath it. What are the benefits specifically of, uh, of agrivoltex as you call it? Yeah, I see uh, there are two layers to it. Mm -hmm. The first layer is the technical layer. You have double use of the soil. You, yeah. uh, you can grow plants underneath, and at the same time, you produce solar energy. Right. And uh, it also prevents a little bit from the uh, evaporation of water, so it enables or, or uh, um, supports the water management. Ah. And there's a second layer to it, which is the social layer. Right. The social layer is basically, um, there's a good, um, you install a lot of solar, and if there's no plants underneath, yeah. um, the, the farmers might not be satisfied. So mm. uh, with this combination, the farmers remain farmers. So it's yeah. their identity, and, and you, they can remain their position in their village, in their uh, society. Right. So it has the second layer of, of social benefit as well, that you, uh, besides earning solar energy, solar power, yeah. and, besides, uh, and at the same time remain being a farmer and, and uh, harvesting. Okay, I hear you. That's quite a lot, because in a way you say, so the social benefit for farmers, it's actually also sort of an efficiency of land use. You mentioned the evaporation, the dew in the morning being caught by the, by the agrivoltics, and then sort of almost irrigating back on what's growing beneath and sort of giving back yeah, in that it's, way. It's a, it's a microclimate underneath, which yeah. is a little colder, a little moister. Yeah, I like that, especially considering that, of course, everybody understands the urgency why we're here, right? We have these big environmental crises, and, and the truth of the matter is that we need to mitigate as fast as we can. At the same time, we will be dealing with more uh, warming, so in a way, providing shadows and making sure that you can sort of cool off perhaps a little bit the microclimate beneath it is also one of the, the things so. that... Yeah. Hey, um, uh, a different uh, question that I would then have if I hear all these benefits. I'm very curious, when we talk about sort of the implementations on this, what is sort of like some of the challenges that you then still face when it comes to accepting agri-PV uh, in systems? Well, I think there are two systems. Uh, there has been a long history of, of uh, planting plants for thousands of years right. and, and uh, doing solar. So uh, these two systems, to some ex extent, have interfaces. Mm. So the demands of the agriculture yeah. will change a little bit of the PV setup. It might mm. be a little higher, it might yeah. be a little wider spaced. Yeah. So uh, there are additional costs associated to it and some ah. drawbacks, maybe a little reduced... Uh, um, um, income from, from the sun and uh, the same happens to the agriculture mm. the solar has a certain impact on the agriculture it ha does have an impact on the lighting it does have an impact on the accessibility of the site as, yeah. as the plants are the, the solar is installed there permanently for 20 or 30 years Right. Yeah. Um, so those two systems need to be synchronized right. uh, and, and they jointly have to find uh, windows of, of operation which yeah. suits both. Mm. So if I understand correctly, especially regarding that last point, is it then the, the, the lack of flexibility because they will be there for such a long time so you sort of have to determine that whatever then you know, is, is growing underneath it or is underneath it is fixed for a long time? Is that what you're trying to say? Um, the use is somewhat, or the, the changing from one crop to the other is to a certain extent limited. Okay, yeah. It's like uh, if yeah. you uh, want to plant uh, grain or corn, which uses tremendously large machines, yeah. uh, that might be limited to, right. to some extent. I get if it. you yeah. um, provide or, or plant smaller crops, yeah. vegetables, etc., you can switch from tomatoes to. Berries. Uh, 
uh, berenjenas or to, to yeah. aubergines uh, yeah, anytime. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And in a way, I mean, it's also a good way to get people in a mindset of thinking for the long term. What do I want to do here? Hey, um, Mr. Gobek, there's one final question I want to ask you, and it's regarding the trend. So when you look at AgriVoltex, AgriPV, what are some of the advancements and innovations that you anticipate or maybe expect to see in the upcoming future? I see there are yet a lot of pearls to be found as uh, there are so many dimensions to this. You mm -hmm. have different technologies of you can install it vertically, uh, horizontally, uh, moving, tracking. So there are technical things that you can alter. You have different soils, you have different climates. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so to really find and different plants, obviously. Right. Yeah. So those four dimensions, you have to find, uh, and I th I'm sure you'll find very interesting solutions. Right. Where, um, if you're going, for example, to a rather dry climate, mm. uh, by shading, we, we mentioned evaporation. Yeah. Uh, where there has been no agriculture before, maybe there is agriculture Devoted possible to afterwards yeah. because the, the microclimate cools down, yeah. shading, yeah. and uh, uh, more moisture. Some. Yeah, that's amazing, actually, the potentiality also of that expanding and what it could deliver. And, and the solutions are not the same everywhere. So there's mm. a certain plants in Morocco and certain yeah. plants in Germany or Sweden. Yeah. And uh, it, whatever grows best on what kind of soil, yeah. uh, that's yet to be explored. Yeah. I think there'll be very interesting solutions. Not... That Not only remaining the productivity of yeah. the soil, but also enhancing it. Okay, so it's really about indeed the differentiation between regions as well. Mr. Goldbeck, I really want to thank you. Yeah.